Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. So should I continue? Yes. yes. Okay. So uh, I graduated from IIT Bombay in early 2015, and thereafter I did a one-year postdoc at TU Eindhoven, which is in the Netherlands. Uh, since uh, May this year, I am working with the Center for Research in Automatic Control, which is located in Nancy, that's uh, towards the southeast of France. Okay, and uh, I work in the area of switched systems and its applications to networked control systems. Now, uh, switch systems are simple forms of hybrid systems. And uh, I have been using tools from graph theory, probability theory, robust control, and optimal control in the context of switched systems. So I'm also interested in applications of these tools to systems and control in general. Now, uh, let me try to motivate the set of results that I will be presenting today. So we will first talk about a networked control system. Now, uh, such systems arise when the sensing, actuating, and controlling units are spatially distributed, and they are connected via shared communication networks. Now, the use of shared networks provides several advantages. Like you have flexible architecture, you have less maintenance and installation costs. So quite naturally, these systems find wide applications in various areas, like uh, large scale water or power distribution systems, which spread over cities in case of autonomous vehicles or in case of remote surgery, which is performed with the help of a medical telerobot. Now, uh, with all these nice features, what we cannot avoid are the network-induced uncertainties. For example, data losses. Now, data packets may be dropped while uh, they are in transit through the network. So this can be caused because of various reasons. For example, there could be transmission errors at the physical network links which is of course more common for uh, wireless networks compared to wired networks. Now there could be buffer overflows due to congestion. Also, if there are long transmission delays, the packets may need to be reordered. So what happens is if the receiver decides to discard the outdated arrivals, this situation also leads to packet drops. Now if we talk about reliable transmission protocols like PCP, uh, that would guarantee that all packets reach their destinations eventually. However, for the purpose of control, retransmission of old packets is not really useful. For example, let's say uh, I want a measurement at every instant of time, and depending on this measurement, I apply a control signal. Now, if a chunk of data is lost in between, then control may be misleading. Consequently, stability and performance of a system may be affected. Now, this leads to several natural questions, like uh, how the network-induced uncertainties affect stability of a system. When is a network control system stabilizable? And if it is stabilizable, then how do you stabilize it? Now, typically, this area of control is known as the control over networks. Now, one way to address these questions is by employing switched systems. So, network control systems under uncertainties are very conveniently modeled and analyzed as switched systems. Now, what is a switched system and how we can model a network control system as a switched system is what we will talk about next. So, typically, a switched system has two ingredients. There is a family of systems and a switching signal. Now the switching signal tells us at every instant of time which system from this family is active, meaning which dynamics is being followed. So on this slide I have a family of discrete time linear systems. There are big n systems in this family. Little sigma is a switching signal and we have a switch system that is generated by this family of systems and the switching signal. Now this is a discrete time switch linear system and we will be referring to it as gamma for the rest of the presentation. 
Now here is an example. There are four systems in the family. We begin at system two, then we switch to system three, to system one, to system four, and so on. Now a network control system can be modeled as a switch system where the switching is between the uh, ideal case and the case with uncertainties. I have an example on this slide which is from one of our recent works. So we were trying to study observability for a networked control system. Now naturally what we wanted is the output measurement at every instant of time. However, because of possible data losses, we were not able to get these measurements. So here little sigma is the data loss signal which can take two values either 0 or 1. Now if it takes 1, that means uh, the output measurement has arrived in good order. Now if it takes value 0, this implies that the output measurement is lost, we don't get it. So clearly what we have here is a switch system where the switching is between whether or not we have received the measurement. And this is governed by the value that little sigma takes. So this plays the role of a switching signal. Now uh, under this modeling, the questions that I just posed in terms of network control systems can be refreshed in terms of a switch system. For example, how a switching signal affects stability of a switch system? When is a switch system stabilizable? And if it is stabilizable, how do you stabilize it? Now for today's presentation, I will focus on this first question. So we will talk about the role of a switching signal for stability of a switch system. Now it so turns out that this question is not trivial. For uh, you may be switching between stable systems and the switch system that you get may be unstable depending on how you switch. So here is such an example on this slide. We have discrete time linear systems. These two systems are individually stable. Now, uh, the switching is based on the value of the state. We start from this initial condition given here and what we get is that the switch system goes unstable. Similarly, it may be possible that you are switching between unstable systems and depending on how you switch, your switch system is stable. Now, this interesting feature motivates us to study classes of switching signals which guarantee stability for a switched system. Now, uh, that's what we call as stabilizing switching signals for switched systems, which is also the title for today's talk. Now, I will be presenting two sets of results, and uh, to keep things simple, we will stick to linear systems. Okay, so uh, for the first set of results, we are given two things, a family of systems and a set of admissible switches. Now, by Admissible switches, I mean that it may be allowed to switch from system 1 to 2, but not from system 2 to 3, etc. Now, when in practice you have such information, well, let's say you have some a priori knowledge about the possible data loss patterns. For example, there could be at most four consecutive data losses, or let's say uh, for every five consecutive transmissions, three uh, instances are uh, such that you receive the data in good order. So in this cases, you have knowledge about the admissible switches. Now, our job is to characterize a class of switching signals under which the resulting switch system, that's uh, gamma, a discrete time switch linear system, it's stable. In particular, we are going for global asymptotic stability. Now, uh, as we know, when we ask for global asymptotic stability, we are asking for two things. One is uh, Lyapunov stability and the other thing is global asymptotic convergence. Now, uh, what is Lyapunov stability? Let's recall that uh, you can give me an epsilon and I will give you a delta corresponding to every epsilon that you give me, such that whenever uh, the trajectory starts from within the delta ball, it remains inside the epsilon ball for all time. And by global asymptotic convergence, we mean that whatever be the initial condition, the trajectory will approach the equilibrium point as time approaches infinity. Now, not only characterization of these stabilizing switching signals, we will also provide algorithms to construct these switching signals. 
So let's say you are on system 1 and you are allowed to go either to system 2 or to system 3. So my algorithm will tell you whether you should go to system 2 or to system 3 so that at the end of the day you will achieve stability of your switch system. So that is about the first set of results. Now uh, in the second set of results we will study a reverse question. So now we know that if a switching signal satisfies a certain condition then under this switching signal a switch system is stable. So now the question under consideration is what class of switch systems admits such a switching signal that satisfies our stability condition. So observe that in the first problem we are talking about A family of systems and A set of admissible switches which are given to us and in the second problem we are talking about a class of switch systems. Now we will characterize this class of switch systems in terms of the classes of subsystems, uh, the components of the switch system and the classes of admissible switches. So uh, these are the two problems I will describe today. Now uh, let's begin with the first one. Let's recall uh, what was it. So we are given a family of systems and we want to know how we should switch so that the switch system is stable. Now it makes sense to take a look at uh, what was already existing in the literature. So in the literature we had dwell time and average dwell time switching. Now in case of dwell time switching between every two consecutive switching instance you have to spend at least a certain duration of time which we name as dwell time. Now this requirement is slightly restrictive because let's say you are on a stable system and you have to spend tau d units of time uh, on this system, at least tau d units of time. Now there is some fault in the system and the system goes unstable but you do not have the option to switch to another good system because you have to spend this duration at least. Now uh, a slightly relaxed condition is what we call as average dwell time switching. What happens is that you are allowed to switch slightly faster at places as long as you do not switch too fast on an average. And uh, how fast you can switch on an average is guaranteed by this condition. So on every interval of time the number of switches can grow at most as an a fine function of the length of the interval. So we have the length of the interval here and this has to hold for every interval of time. Meaning on the timeline whatever be the length of a window that you select and wherever you shift it this condition on the number of switches needs to hold. Now dwell time and average dwell time switching are sufficient to guarantee stability if you have only stable systems in the family. What if in addition you have unstable systems? Well in that case you put additional pointwise constraints on the duration of activation of unstable systems. So on every interval of time you do not only count the number of switches, in addition you have to count what uh, duration you are spending on every unstable system. Now one issue with these results is uh, the numerical tractability. Because when you are constructing a switching signal, it's not really an easy task to check certain conditions on every interval of time. So what we decided to do is the following. We wanted to accommodate unstable systems and transcend beyond these pointwise conditions. So we will not ask you to check anything on every interval of time. Now before we look at what our condition is, uh, we will quickly take a look at some properties of the given family of systems and the set of admissible switches which we will utilize in our main result. So we assume that there are two types of systems in the given family, asymptotically stable and unstable. Now uh, corresponding to each system in the given family there exists a quadratic Lyapunov like function which is of this form whose rate of growth or decay will give me a quantitative measure of how unstable or, this, or stable the corresponding system is. So that's what we have here in this inequality and lambda i captures this measure. So notice that if 
the system is asymptotically stable lambda i lies between 0 and 1 strict bounds and if it's unstable lambda i takes values bigger than 1 now we will have this lambda i explicitly present in our stability condition now uh, Whenever you are allowed to switch from system I to system J, the corresponding Lyapunov-like functions are linearly comparable and they are comparable by means of this scalar mu I and J which will also be present in our stability condition. Now what do I mean by linearly comparable? So uh, roughly you can say that they are of the same order. You can see that if one function is quadratic and the other one is quartic, of course this inequality will not hold. Okay, so now we can uh, look at our uh, stability condition. So the problem was, we are given a family of discrete time linear systems and a set of addressable uh, switches and we are trying to characterize a class of switching signals under which the resulting switched system is globally asymptotically stable. So what we propose is the following, that the discrete time switched linear system gamma is globally asymptotically stable for every switching signal sigma that satisfies these two inequalities. Okay, so uh, the first thing to observe is that both these conditions talk about the asymptotic behavior of the switching signal. So we are not putting any pointwise condition on the switching signal to guarantee stability. Now let's fix the time t which is uh, strictly positive. So in the first condition this term n sigma t gives the number of switches before and including t. Now this ratio of n sigma t to t is nothing but the switching frequency at time t. So this condition tells me that the switching frequency should not be asymptotically vanishingly small. Why it is required? This is required because we are considering unstable systems in the family. So if it so happens that an unstable system is activated and thereafter there is no switch, then the game is lost. But if uh, one has only stable systems, one may of course get rid of this condition. Now coming to the second condition, we see a ratio. On the numerator, we have uh, the admissible switches, the unstable systems, and on the denominator we have the asymptotically stable system. So the first term on the numerator is a weighted sum over the number of times each admissible switch has occurred. In the second sum we have the number of times an unstable system is activated weighted by a measure of how unstable this system is and we have a similar sum in the denominator but it's over the asymptotically stable systems. Now we want this ratio in the asymptote to be strictly less than 1. Now uh, summarizing, this result says that a discrete time switched linear system is globally asymptotically stable under a switching signal that satisfies these two conditions. Now let me highlight some features of this result. So the first thing that we already noted is that our conditions involve only asymptotic behavior of the switching signals. So they do not involve nor imply pointwise bounds unlike the, the earlier conditions. Now we allow unstable systems in the family. However, if you look at this ratio condition in the denominator, we have the asymptotically stable systems. So if this set is empty, of course this ratio is not defined. So what we need is the presence of at least one asymptotically stable system in the family. However, we do not ask the unstable systems in the given family to form any stable con uh, convex combination, which is a requirement for the results in switched systems that deal only with unstable systems. Now, uh, since we are talking about only the asymptotic behavior, we fail to ensure identical transient behavior for two switching signals, both satisfying our condition. However, this is inherent with the pointwise conditions. Now, another very nice feature is that our condition affords simple algorithmic construction. Now, this is also a little bit intuitive because we want 
some conditions only to be checked in the asymptote. So of course, it uh, gives you simple algorithms compared to checking something on every interval of time. Now, in the next few slides, we will talk about this algorithmic construction. So the question is, given a family of systems and a set of admissible switches, how do we algorithmically construct a switching signal that satisfies our stability condition? Now for this purpose, we associate a weighted directed graph with a switch system. So uh, the vertices of the graph are the systems in the given family. Now if it is allowed to dwell on a particular system, we put a self loop on the corresponding vertex and whenever it is allowed to switch from one system to another, we put a directed edge between those two systems. Now these scalars here are chosen to be the vertex widths and these scalars here are the edge widths. Now this choice comes naturally because if we get back to our stability condition, see here with every admissible switch we have this weights associated and with every activation of the system we have this weights associated. So now these systems are the vertices and admissible switches are the edges. So quite naturally we associate these scalars as the vertex weights and these are now the edge weights. So what we have here is a weighted directed graph. Here is an example. Let's say that the given family has three systems. So this graph has three vertices. Now it's allowed to dwell on system 1. So here is a self loop on system 1. Corresponding to every other admissible switch, we have directed edges. So for 1 to 2, we have a directed edge between vertices 1 and 2. And these scalars are the edge widths and the vertex widths. Now uh, let's recall that a walk on a directed graph is an alternating sequence of vertices and edges obeying the usual continuity properties. And the length of a walk is the number of edges that appear in this sequence counting repetitions. So what we could show is that on a given weighted directed graph G, the set of walks of infinite length and the set of switching signals are in bijective correspondence. Now uh, the proof of this result is aided by the fact that we are in discrete time setting. Now how does this fact help us? Okay, so now the question that given a family of systems and a set of admissible switches, well uh, we should have a set of admissible switches here that's missing on the slide, sorry about it. So how do we algorithmically construct a switching signal that satisfies our condition? Now under uh, this fact, it is now equivalent to ask, given a weighted directed graph G, how do we algorithmically construct an infinite walk whose corresponding switching signal satisfies our stability condition? Now this correspondence is a la this fact. So what we are now asking is the following. We are given a weighted directed graph and we want to algorithmically construct an infinite walk that satisfies a certain condition involving the vertex and edge weights. Now, of course, it's a difficult problem because an algorithm should ideally stop. So what we do is we construct this infinite walk in terms of closed walks, which are of course finite. So by closed walk, I mean that a walk that starts on uh, starts and ends on the same vertex. Uh, same vertex. Now, uh, when you have a closed walk, okay, so what we want is an algorithm. With a closed walk, you know that it's a finite. However, we don't have an upper bound on the length of this closed walk. So we don't know when our algorithm should stop. It should say, okay, yeah, that, uh, well, the graph you have given me, there is no such closed walk that you are looking for. So for that purpose, we specialize this closed walk to the level of circuits and cycles. Now a circuit is a closed walk in which no edge is repeated and the cycle is a closed walk in which no vertex is repeated. So of course the initial and final vertices are the same, but no vertex in the middle is repeated. So 
What we will do is, we, on a given weighted directed ground G, we will algorithmically construct a circuit or a cycle that satisfies a certain condition and then we will repeat this circuit or the cycle to generate an infinite walk and the switching signal corresponding to this infinite walk will satisfy our stability condition. So, in the first step, we say that on a given weighted directed ground G, if there is a closed walk W that satisfies this condition, then you generate an infinite walk by repeating this closed walk W and a switching signal which corresponds to this infinite walk satisfies our stability condition. Now observe that this condition on the closed walk W is nothing but a finitary version of our asymptotic stability condition. And in the second step, we show that on a given digraph G, the existence of a closed walk, a circuit and a cycle that satisfy this condition are equivalent. So we can find either of a cycle or a circuit with an algorithm and then repeat it to generate an infinite walk and its corresponding switching signal is good enough. Now uh, it is interesting to note that this result doesn't restrict to periodic switching signals because when I say repeating, we can also have multiple closed walks which you can concatenate. For example, let's say you have two closed walks, W1 and W2 on the same vertex. So you can have something like W1 and then twice of W2 and then maybe thrice W1. So your switching signal is not necessarily periodic. Now at the level of circuits or cycles, what we have is algorithms. So the first algorithm detects a circuit on a given weighted directed graph which satisfies this condition. Now uh, this is a two-step algorithm. In the first step we have a feasibility problem. So what this problem does is this uh, marks the edges on the given weighted digraph G which will constitute of this particular circuit. In the second step Obeying the connectivity of the given graph, it constructs the circuit and outputs it. So from this algorithm, we get a circuit which satisfies this condition. Now while talking about the cycles, we show that it is sufficient to find the cycle that is of negative weight. Now what is that? On a weighted directed graph, if you identify a cycle and then sum up its age weights, if that is negative, we call it a negative weight cycle. Now there are several algorithms which does this task for me. The very well known one is the Bellman Ford Moore algorithm. However, there are several variants of this currently available in the literature. In fact, we have results that lists out all negative weight cycles on a given weighted directed graph. So we can apply any of them and then repeat this cycle to generate an infinite walk and that serves our purpose. Now, uh, before ending the first set of results, we will take a look at a numerical example. So we have three systems in the family. System 2 is asymptotically stable and systems 1 and 3 are unstable. So it is allowed to dwell on the unstable systems but not on the asymptotically stable system which makes this problem even more interesting. Now we construct the Lyapunov like functions and then calculate the scalars. Now the first plot here demonstrates that the problem is non-trivial because if you just take an arbitrary switching signal then not necessarily you get stability. For example, with this switching signal, we have instability. So it makes sense to look for switching signals which are stabilizing. So what we do is uh, we apply our algorithm for detecting a circuit, uh, which is nice for us. So our algorithm gives us this circuit, which begins and ends at the asymptotically stable vertex and in between it's activating the unstable systems. Now we generate an infinite walk by repeating this circuit 
and we are in interested in the switching signal corresponding to this infinite walk. So we uh, sample the initial conditions uniformly at random and apply this switching signal. So here is a plot of the track norm of the trajectory with time. So our claim of global asymptotic stability is verified with this example. So that was about the first set of results where we characterized a class of stabilizing switching signals and also constructed them algorithmically. Now uh, let us move to the second question. Okay, so it's in fact a reverse question. It says what class of switched systems admits a switching signal that satisfies our stability condition? Now, uh, when we are asking for a class of switched systems, we are asking for what class of family of systems and admissible switches are good enough to admit a switching signal that satisfies our stability condition. Now, why this problem makes sense? That's because if we get back to the stability condition, okay, so here we see that we have the set of admissible switches and these scalars. So these scalars represent the systems in the given family. Of course, at the level of an abstraction, we are the Lyapunov like functions. So, uh, and the choice of this Lyapunov like function is not unique. Correspondingly, these scalars are also not unique. So what happens that, uh, suppose you choose a set of scalars and with a given set of admissible switches, it may not be possible to construct a switching signal that satisfies this condition. So it makes sense to study what class of systems and admissible switches will actually admit a switching signal that satisfies our condition. So uh, in other words, we are asking for the following question. Let's consider the ensemble of switch systems as the sample space. Now, how likely it is that we sample a switch system from this ensemble and this switch system admits our switching signals. So under uh, the association of a weighted directed graph with a switch system that I just described, we will answer this question. So what we are interested in is studying what class of weighted digraphs admits an infinite work that satisfies our stability condition and it suffices to answer what class of weighted digraphs admits a circuit or a cycle that satisfies this condition and then we will concatenate these cycles to generate an infinite work with, uh, whose corresponding switching signal will satisfy this condition. Now, uh, when we are looking for a class of weighted digraphs, we will characterize this in terms of connectivity and weights. So in particular, we will provide a two-step solution. In the first step, we will uh, give a randomized algorithm that detects a cycle on a digraph and then we will identify the class of connectivity and weights on this digraph that guarantees that a cycle obtained from our algorithm satisfies this condition. So it's interesting that uh, we will now talk about classes of weighted digraphs which will correspond to classes of switch systems which is in contrast to the previous problem where we are we were given a switch system and we were characterizing classes of switching signals and in particular we will characterize this weighted digraphs in terms of their statistical properties so let's begin with the randomized algorithm Okay, so the algorithm works in the following manner. At the first step, it selects an asymptotically stable vertex uniformly at random. At every next step, it will select an asymptotically stable out neighbor of the current vertex uniformly at random. But we have to keep in mind that that particular out neighbor should not have been selected before, which is given here. So we are interested in uh, the difference between the set of all out neighbors and the out neighbors which were already selected. Now, what we do when we are run out of all such options, then we pick the asymptotically stable out neighbor of the current vertex 
which was selected at the maximum distance meaning if you list out all the selected word already selected vertices then you should pick the out neighbor of the current vertex which appears first in that list now why we want the one at the maximum distance that's because the length of the cycle will matter for us which we will see momentarily so uh, an example will make this algorithm clearer so here we have five uh, vertices on this graph vertices 1 2 and 3 correspond to asymptotically stable systems and the vertices 4 and 5 correspond to unstable systems now let's say at the first instant we pick vertex 1 now vertex 1 has two asymptotically stable out neighbors vertex 2 and vertex 3 now let's say i pick now vertex 2 has two asymptotically stable out neighbors vertex 1 and vertex 3. Now 1 was already selected so I can go only to 3. Now vertex 3 has only one asymptotically stable out neighbor which is 2 although it was, this was picked before that's the only option left so we go back there. So what we have is a cycle which starts at vertex 2 goes to vertex 3 and then comes back to vertex 2. So our algorithm gives a cycle on a diagram. Now you can ask me that I was uh, talking about deterministic algorithms for detecting cycles. So why do we need a fresh randomized algorithm? So that's because if you notice in case of the existing deterministic algorithms, what we have is that we have to store the weights, the vertex weights and the age weights prior to the application of these algorithms. But in this era of large scale systems which have uh, several substructures, it's a difficult task to store so many scalars on the memory of a computer. So uh, this algorithm will help us uh, and how that will happen we shall see. So uh, the question was on what class of weighted digraphs which we will characterize in terms of connectivity and weights a cycle obtained from our algorithm satisfies the condition that we are interested in. So first we will talk about favorable connectivity. Now uh, consider function phi to be of monotone increasing nature. For example the square root function. Now an exact definition of phi will not be uh, required for our results. However, uh, I want you to keep in mind this monotone increasing nature because this will play a role in our main result. Now, we call a weighted directed graph as nicely connected if every vertex on this graph has at least these many asymptotically stable out neighbors. So this notation particularly gives the cardinality of the set of asymptotically stable vertices. So the number of asymptotically stable vertices on a diagram. Now, if a weighted diagram is such that every vertex has these many out neighbors at least, then we call that diagram as nicely connected. Now, how does it help? That's what we have in this lemma. So, if a diagram is nicely connected, then a cycle that's obtained from our algorithm has two properties. The first one is that all vertices on this cycle are asymptotically stable and the second one is that a cycle that is obtained from our algorithm is of at least this length. Now when we characterize the class of weights, this length will play a role. So we have a connectivity, we have characterized a class of nicely connected digraphs. Now the question is what class of weights on a nicely connected digraph allows our cycle to satisfy this condition? For that purpose, we define a digraph to be nicely weighted if the vertex weights and the age weights satisfy certain bounds which are given in these two bullets. So in particular, they come from some interval and they have some bounds on their expected values. So essentially what we are doing is we are putting uniform bounds on the vertex and age weights. So this is no loss of generality because we are dealing with finite graphs. Now if a digraph in addition to being nicely connected is also nicely weighted 
then what happens is that a cycle obtained from our algorithm satisfies this condition with probability at least this much. Now, if the set of asymptotically stable vertices is large enough, recall that P was a monotone increasing function. So this quantity is large and E power this quantity is small, this probability is high. So this nicely connected feature is guaranteeing a certain minimum length of the cycle that we obtain from our algorithm and with the nicely weighted feature we get that this probability is high provided that you have a good number of asymptotically stable vertices in the switched system. Now uh, if we recall what we wanted to do, we wanted to uh, characterize a class of switched systems. Okay, so this nicely connected feature corresponds to the set of admissible switches and the nicely weighted feature. Uh, so this is talking about the set of vertex weights and the age weights. So at the level of an abstraction, it is corresponding to the systems. And this abstraction is in terms of the Lyapunov functions. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, characterizing a weighted directed graph, uh, classes of weighted directed graphs with uh, statistical properties, we have characterized a class of switched systems which satisfies our stability condition because we can just repeat this cycle satisfying this condition and we generate an infinite walk and the switching signal corresponding to this infinite walk is good enough for us. So we will uh, Okay, so before getting into the example, I will highlight one feature. So if your switch system is such that the subsystems are prone to evolve over time. So, uh, and if it is evolving in a manner that these weights are affected, okay, so the vertex weights and age weights are affected. The good thing is you don't need to store these weights every time you apply our algorithm. And in addition, as long as the weights satisfy these bounds, we provide uniform probabilistic guarantees for global asymptotic stability of the switched system. Okay, so now is the time for a quick numerical example. What we do is that we take a large number of asymptotically stable vertices. We select this function P so that the graph is nicely connected. Now we sample the weights from uh, the interval so that uh, the graph remains nicely weighted and what we demonstrate here is that as the length of the cycle increases the empirical probability that the cycle satisfies the condition that we are interested in is overwhelmingly high so uh, and that's what we had in this condition that if the length of the cycle is large this probability is high now uh, let me summarize what all we discussed. We looked at two sets of results. The first one was where we were given a family of systems and a set of admissible switches and we characterized a class of switching signals which provide stability and then we provided algorithms to construct these switching signals and in the second set of results we characterized a class of switched systems which admits a switching signal that satisfies our condition. Okay, so uh, how much time do I have? Uh, maybe another five minutes or so. Okay, so uh, I wanted to quickly highlight the other directions that I'm working on. So uh, the first thing is about analysis and uh, synthesis of stabilizing switching signals. So. Uh, the result that I just described uh, falls under this category. So we do it for uh, both continuous and discrete time systems. And in terms of stability, we are interested in uh, other types of stability as well, like input to state stability, input output to state stability, etc. So this is uh, what I have in my PhD thesis. Now in Eindhoven, I was working on stabilizability of switched systems. So, uh, which of course corresponds to when a network control system is stabilizable. 
Now here what we considered is that all the systems are unstable and under what conditions there will be a switching signal which is stabilizing. Now uh, once again we considered numerically tractable conditions and uh, going a little bit beyond stability I also studied controllability, observability, reachability and uh, alike system theoretic properties for networked control systems. This work is in particular uh, in collaboration with University of Catholic de Lvov in Belgium where I was a visitor for a month. And uh, currently in Nancy, I am working on performance of switched systems. So what we do is we characterize switching signals which are not only stabilizing, in addition it also optimizes certain performance of the switched system. So uh, these are optimal control problems for switched systems that I am currently working on. Okay, so uh, that's all what I had for today. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. I uh, will uh, see if there are any questions from the audience. Yes. Um, can, uh, can you show the uh, result that you had on the st stable no, condition? Sorry, not audible. Can you put up the result that you had on STAB condition? Uh, uh, this. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. No. Okay, so you had this result uh, that essentially said that it's stabilizable if that equation, some expression was less than 1. Uh, can you put up that expression again? Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, this uh, theorem yes. uh, gives a sort of a sufficient condition that if it is Stay, uh, if this condition uh, holds, maybe need to go to I'm sorry, uh, you're not audible. So this theorem gives a sufficient condition. If this, if this, if this inequality holds, then uh, yes. you're able to get a sequence of uh, switchings uh, that yes. uh, stabilizes. Um, so yes. in this, uh, the assumption is that there is something which is stable, right? Uh, P S is non-empty. Yes. Um, so. Yes. Um, is this condition, uh, ne uh, first question is, is this condition necessary as well? No, it is not. It uh, is. You were asking about the uh, less than one condition yeah, or? The less than one, a, less than one it condition. Is, it is just sufficient. It is it's just, just sufficient. sufficient. Yes. Okay. So is there a characterization of what is necessary to ensure uh, stability as well? Um, okay, so. Uh, There is a necessary condition that exists in the literature, mm -hmm. however that doesn't talk about characterizing uh, stabilizing switching signals, instead it talks about stability under all possible switching signals and that's what we call as joint spectral radius. So uh, I'm not aware of a necessary condition that talks about characterizing stabilizing switching signals because when you have unstable systems in the family, uh, it's a little difficult to guarantee stability under all switching signals because as long as you are allowed to dwell on the unstable systems, well, you certainly cannot allow that switching signal. So yes, I'm not aware of any such necessary condition. The other uh, question that I have is the uh the main purpose here is to make it globally asymptotically stable. Is that correct? Yes. And yes. you have a, the set PS to be non-empty. Yes. So my naive question is why can't you just remain in one of the states forever? Yes. So that's because uh, you are not always allowed to stay stable. For example, uh, the case that I considered for networked control systems. So let's say uh, Okay, so uh, you have a system, uh, let's consider a very simple case, x of t plus 1 is axt plus b u t, okay. Now uh, let's say there is, and a is unstable, but whenever you apply the control u, uh, consider a state feedback control. So you have a plus b k that is stable. Now whenever you, uh, there is a data loss, so you may just not have that control available to you at all time. So you are not stable at all times. So 
it's not necessary that you will be allowed to dwell on that stable system forever and as we considered in that numerical example we were not allowed to dwell on the stable system so yes that trivial case goes away i see so uh, perhaps you cause the uh, uh, stable uh, switches and uh, uh, the unstable ones may be cheaper and so if you consider an optimal control framework then this would naturally enter into the picture where you would want to switch to an unstable uh, control and then come back to a stable one at a subsequent time. Sure. Okay, uh, maybe someone else can ask a question. Thank you. So continuing on, uh, on the previous question, uh, so essentially, do you know a priori which systems are stable and which are not? I mean, is it always the case? Yes, for uh, this result, it is assumed that uh, in the given family of systems, we know which are stable and which are unstable. And supposing you really don't know that, then is there a way of still doing this stuff? I mean, that those kind of results that you have. Uh, if you could please... Uh, no, so for instance, supposing you really don't know which systems are stable to begin with. Yes. And can okay. you still say something about stability of such a... of switching systems? Uh, no, I don't think, think that can be done with this result. However, I haven't given it much thought, but no, because uh, we are essentially uh, taking the disjoint sets of stable and unstable systems. So, yes, I don't know. Okay, and these are linear systems. No, uh, so uh, when you are talking about Lyapunov functions, as long as you assume the existence of that, so this result actually extends to non-linear cases. However, as I mentioned, for simplicity, I presented it for uh, linear systems. In fact, we have a journal publication on, at nonlinear analysis hybrid systems where we have uh, uh, given it in terms of non-linear systems. And do you really need to construct the Lyapunov function, or it's uh, just in the just the existence is sufficient? Uh, for linear systems, well, it will exist. You will have a quadratic Lyapunov-like function. But for non-linear systems, yeah, you, uh, yes, you need to construct because uh, that linearly comparable Lyapunov functions plays a role. So you have to have Lyapunov functions for all systems uh, of the same order. So yes, construction matters. Yeah, so but then the question is how easy is it to construct a lab no, function for a nonlinear system? Okay, so uh, that is the same uh, for every case. We know that it's not an easy task, so yes. It's an assumption that we place in all our results. We'll ask another so I have another question. Um, yes. So um, you mentioned an example where um, you had two stable systems and if you switch um, in a manner that uh, is not the right way to do it then you could render the system unstable uh, two you had two stable uh, uh, linear systems uh, so this example had only one stable system and the two no you uh, you give another example where there were two stable systems and by switching you could render the system oh, okay. unstable Yes. Yes, this one maybe. Yeah, by switching you could render the system unstable. Yeah. So I'm more interested in a situation yes. where there are two unstable systems and can switching yes. help us stabilize the system? This doesn't satisfy your STAB condition. Yes. Uh, but can by switching, okay. you, uh, can you make it uh, stable somehow? Mm -hmm. So is there an example of such a system? Yes. So. Uh very trivially, one can consider the cases where the unstable systems, so let's say you have two systems, A1 and A2, okay, but, uh, and you take a convex combination of these two, so that may be stable. There are such examples, yes. Mm, I see. Okay. And uh, the convex combination that renders it stable would be the switching frequency that you would use, that would specify the yes, switching indeed. frequency. Okay. Okay. Indeed. Thank you. Any 
ओके अत्रे नो मोर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस साइड फॉर नाउ सो थैंक यू अगेन इट वॉज वेरी नाइस टॉक सो वील क्लोज फॉर नाउ एंड देन वील आई गेट बैक इन टच विथ यू एंड वी कैन डिस्कस ओके ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay